and uh, welcome to uh, my presentation today, uh, Virtual Meerkats. Uh, today we're going to do a kind of a brief entry-level expedition through setting up Siricata within a virtual environment, uh, covering planning, implementation, common problems, tuning, and tips. Uh, all right, so it is good to meet everybody uh, virtually. I will not be... Uh, physically at the conference, um, but we'll be attending virtually. Um, this, and this is also a pre-recording. So a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Jeremy Mountain Johnson. Um, did want to add that my last name is my real last name. I did uh, combine it when I got married. Um, no no uh, complicated or unique uh, story behind that other than that. Um, not related to, to Mountain Man or Robert Redford or anything like that. So I am from uh, the Minneapolis area in Minnesota in the United States. I do have a uh, computer forensics uh, Bachelor of Applied Science degree, uh, also a computer networking and a Associate of Applied Sciences. Uh, I do have a couple of certifications, but uh, yeah, I'm not not too not too big on those um, really. But I do have a few um, in information security and digital forensics. Um, formerly, I did some uh, digital forensics, uh, kind of transitioned into incident response. Uh, I am a former adjunct uh, professor. I primarily taught Unix, um, a little bit of uh, digital forensics as well. And I currently work as a security analyst uh, in the information um, in the public sector, and um, have been doing that for for quite a few years now. So, with that, let's get started. All right. So today, our agenda is. Uh, kind of going over some recommended settings in a virtual environment uh, for your Siricata sensors. Uh, talk a little bit about operating systems. Uh, I'm not really going to recommend specific ones, um, just kind of uh, attributes that they should, uh, should meet um, for kind of the ideal virtual environment. Uh, go through planning your setup a little bit. Common virtual methods of getting traffic flow to your sensors. Um, obviously, it's a little different in a virtual environment. Uh, you do have a lot of methods at your disposal, uh, which we'll cover. So also want to consider feature scaling considerations. And this is kind of uh, an important one, a big takeaway um, from all this as you're, as you're going through planning your, your virtual uh, sensor environment. Uh, just because you always want to think ahead, uh, especially with um, in regards to when you're doing your deployment, um, you need to make sure it is scalable in the future as well. So we're going to cover a little bit about that. Uh, I'm going to talk briefly on drivers and the uh, Siricata running mode uh, that you're going to run the service in. Um, primarily, most of the stuff is defaults, but there's a little bit of a caveat with the drivers uh, that we will get into. So. Also, uh, network segmentation um, kind of depends. <laughs> I'm a big fan of this because it helps uh, helps with organization. But uh, you know, if it it, it kind of depends on what your desires are and, and how organized you want to be with this. Uh, but it is an important factor, I believe. So we'll cover that a little bit. Also, um, in regards to the sensor itself, we're going to talk about uh, uh, the Berkeley packet filter. Uh, and pass rules, and, and this kind of gets into a little bit of the tuning, uh, where what I suggest, uh, what has worked best for me as far as, um, you know, uh, efficiency goes, uh, you want to avoid switch loops, obviously, um, and a few other things we'll talk about there. So, and another issue is going to be uh, typical, typical problems that you run into in tuning. Um, I threw a lot of things that uh, over the last several years I've been doing, uh, running a virtual environment um, of, of typical problems I've come across. And, and some of these I've spent quite a lot of time uh, kind of hitting my head into a wall on for several hours. So hopefully this helps uh, some people um, if you have a, a path to look to, <laughs> if you have some of these issues, um, as well as kind of tuning a little bit too. Uh, 
as well. So, um, and then I'll just do a, a, a brief overview of um, kind of the uh, hypothetical, uh, ideal virtualized production environment uh, for your sensors. Um, and then after that, we'll follow up with a uh, live discussion and Q and A. Um, I, I definitely would like to hear from uh, from folks, uh, even though it's virtually. I would like to hear and have some discussion as well. That's always uh, a way to help everybody improve. So we'll, we'll wrap up with that. All right. All right. Real quick before we get started. I did want to mention the Siricon Code of Conduct is located on Discord. I believe it should be on the website as well. Uh, I'm not sure that's covered. Uh, all information presented in my is my opinion and personal recommendations only, not those of my employer, uh, OISF, or anyone else. Uh, I was just letting you know that uh, this is kind of me doing my thing, um, not really related to any other uh, company. I'm not trying to sell anything. Um, just kind of doing this for for Siricon uh, because it's something that I've uh, I've been very fond of and appreciate the work they do. So, all right. And I do want to really uh, stress this: uh, due to variations of hypervisor hardware, software, OS versions, I highly recommend testing in a similar lab environment. Um, you want to do this, um, you know, ideally, even if it's offline, um, after you get into production, um, just having it available is huge. Uh, just because if you do run into problems later on, especially in production, you have an environment that you can test on without having to, to worry about, um, uh, you know, go reverting to an older snapshot or, uh, you know, <laughs> there's all kinds of, you know, I mean, I, I don't probably need to tell people this, but it, it is just important to, to have uh, that test environment. Um, uh, when there are fires in production, it's, it's, it's good just to have a place to go to, to safe test without, or test without worrying about getting things uh, too, uh, too screwed up in production. So, um, and, and that, that's helped me a lot uh, as, I've, as I've been... Um, I started this uh, several years ago, um, uh, and it's 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 been immensely huge because it's 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 so much nicer to have an environment ready to go and fire up uh, to to do troubleshooting on. Uh, same thing with upgrades as well when you're upgrading your sensors. So just to to test it first, um, that saved me a couple times with um, things that may break in a newer version. So there's always that. So. Right. And this is primarily going to cover um, Nix-based operating systems, so uh, FreeBSD, NetBSD, Linux. Uh, I would like to experiment with Windows. I, I've got kind of excited with uh, the support uh, Siricata has um, evolved into in that environment. Um, if I didn't have little kids, I probably, I probably would spend more time and would have included that. Um, However, that, that is not the case. So uh, uh, some of the stuff you can probably take over to uh, a Windows uh, environment. However, um, you know, it is a different, it is a different world <laughs> with Siricata. So um, just keep that in mind as we're going through the slides. And, you know, if anyone's doing anything um, in Windows with uh, virtualized sensors, uh, I definitely would like to hear about it in the, in the, in the discussion Q&A part. <laughs> All right, so recommended settings. Um, one of the most important uh, recommendations I would give is dedicated resource allocation. Uh, your vCPUs uh, should not be shared. Uh, they should be dedicated to your sensor. Uh, the reason for this is, um, and you know, as uh, you know, hypervisors evolve, it does get better with. Um, uh, shared allocation. However, I've yet to be able to run, um, really have it run uh, efficiently and uh, accurately. Um, uh, it, it, it just really, it, there's too much latency with, with shared resources. Um, so you do want to make sure that you dedicate resources. Um, one of the things to yeah keep in mind too is uh, VRAM 
you know, obviously same thing, just um, typically you, you want to set it somewhere and just forget it, um, you know, unless you have problems down the line, but just kind of set it, um, you know, you don't need to have it um, scale up or down. Ideally, you just have it set uh, to meet your needs, the needs of your environment. Uh, yeah, obviously with a virtual neck too, it's, I mean, a lot of these are kind of the same with a physical uh, setup is that you want to have adequate speed, uh, make sure that the, uh, the OS is recognizing uh, the link uh, connection and, and the speed is is adequate uh, for your needs. Uh, storage pool IO. Um, this gets a little tricky. I haven't really found uh, like a magic number for. Um, I did start out with uh, platter disk um, in a RAID array and that uh, worked fine. Uh, everything is pretty much SSD uh now so so io isn't isn't much of a problem um but yeah obviously when you get into storage io too you want to uh, make sure that uh whether if you're the the team of one who also handles storage uh make sure that um you're keeping an eye on uh your your storage pool io and make, making sure that you you know you're not under provisioned across your entire environment um Typically for me, I, I talk to uh, a team um, and, and make sure that um, that that looks good and we're not we're not over provisioned or under provisioned there. So uh, GPU acceleration, I, I don't believe is needed. I, I played with this a, a few years ago uh, with with CUDA and um, it's uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't see, it didn't seem to gain a lot, so I don't know. I I, I believe it's deprecated in, in the latest version of Siricata. Um, you don't really need that. Uh, most my sensors are all headless. Um, you know, you can obviously if you're running uh, like Scurious Community Edition or you know Enterprise or any of that stuff, um, or um, you know, there's other um, graphical. Um, distros out there that kind of throw the sensor in with the sim and log management um, that might be something to consider but from a headless sensor standpoint uh, it's not something that you necessarily would need to have um, and then kind of again tapping back to the physical world uh, more rules plus traffic more v resources um, you know so if you're doing the whole uh, et pro rule set uh, plus your custom rules um, you know you're going from say you had a 100 meg network and your your company's growing or your agency's growing and you need uh, you need more traffic um, that might that might be uh, throwing in you know uh, uh, going through a gigabit uh, connection um, between the sensor and your network um, or 10 gigs or 40 gigs. <laughs> but obviously with that comes more uh, virtual resources. Um, I noticed uh, a lot of the docs in uh, Siricata do not cover um, like direct uh, hardware, uh, like minimum requirements, so to speak. It, it really just, every, every environment is unique. So um, this is, again, something where your test environment is going to come in handy a lot, um, whether you're using a TCP replay um, or just replaying traffic uh, to that environment um, and just trying to hit it hard and trying to see what uh, what's happening with uh, memory allocation, core allocation, uh, making sure that you cover um, Make, making sure you're covered there. So um, it, it, again, it is hard to recommend like minimum or preferred uh, requirements here, but um, uh, that's kind of where your test environment does come from. Um, and then storage uh, really depends on, you know, how you're setting up these sensors. So are you, uh, are you saving PCAPs locally? Uh, or you could, you know, it could be on an NFS share or uh, a different uh, storage backend on your hypervisor. Um, you know, e, uh, e logs. Uh, you know, what's the retention on that? Uh, Redis is usually pretty good with storage, but um, you know, you obviously need to have adequate storage if you're using that for uh, <laughs> for any kind of logging as well. 
Um, so that it really depends on what what you're doing on each sensor um, and, and how much you're uh, what kind of duties you're having your sen sensors do. Um, so, but yeah, I, I would say too. I just throw this up there. I, I know various points in time I did do some uh, having the sensors do uh, a lot of storage. Um, so you know, at that point you want to make sure again you're in touch with um, uh, the the, the uh, storage uh, team or um, making sure that you're not um, uh, biting off more than you can chew and, and setting up alerts for uh, space because um, uh, you can easily uh, run run the OS into the ground um, and crash Zircada or the actual OS itself or um, if you're not keeping an eye on it. So it is something that if you are doing storage intensive stuff, make sure that you have a means to monitor um, space allocation so you don't uh, over provision there. So, all right, and then getting into operating systems. Um, again, this is kind of a general um, guidelines, suggestions, if you will. Uh, what I typically do is have a base. Uh, kind of a base master image for my sensors. Um, and then that goes, you know, to different locations or different network segments. Uh, and with that base image, um, you know, whether it's, you know, it's keeping it consistent. So it's Debian, uh, Red Hat Enterprise, uh, Fedora. Um, it, it, everything is kind of too, I get everything tuned and it's just one image and that's what I use. Uh, and that's what I basically deploy that as a template. Um, and then kind of tweak it to its, again, its lo physical location or its, um, uh, location on the network. And that, that saves a lot of time. One of the advantages of a, a virtual environment is, um, especially with templating, you can just uh, have it ready to go and, and, and you go rather than um, I mean, you can do that physically with um, disk images, but uh, it's, it's just, it's nice, quick, nice and quick too. And if you ever have to revert back to it, uh, it's, it's just a template click away. So in most cases <laughs> or command line. <laughs> um, so kernel modules for uh, VNX, um, I want to make sure your network cards have uh, the OS that you do choose, uh, the kernel does support uh, VNIX. Um, and one of the reasons for that is, uh, you know, when we get into troubleshooting too, that, that becomes important if they're out of date, uh, that, that'll come into play as well. And I'll cover this a little bit more about, uh, about the VNIX because um, there is emulated hardware as well. Uh, but I will talk about that in a little bit here. So uh, maintained ports or package available. So these are the packages um, or ports if you're on in the BSD world uh, that I like to have on the master image. And uh, yeah, that's uh, OpenVM tools uh, or you know VBox tools, uh, TCP dump or T-Shark uh, PCAP on the BSD side and then uh, secure shell uh, daemon running as well, or packages as well. Um, and the reason for that is uh, running uh, these sensors virtually, you want to be able to uh, have, it, have it be seamless um, within the, the hypervised environment. Uh, one of the one of the issues I run into is you know if, if um, there's maintenance being done on the hypervisor side, for example, um, sometimes they will need to safely shut down uh, the the sensors. Uh, uh, ideally, you get a heads up on that, <laughs> but um, it, it makes uh, it makes for a, a smooth shutdown, um, and so that 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 uh, makes it easier for for you and um, your coworkers that are, are kind of dealing with the, the maintenance and administration on the virtual side. Um, but also too, when you're looking at uh, snapshots, um, you do get a better, uh, typically these uh, services help um, 
help with, you know, if you wanted to, I mean, I typically don't, but if you wanted to do like a full memory grab um, in a snapshot, um, it just, the snapshots work a lot uh, cleaner um, when they've got a service to the hypervisor has a way to interact with the actual uh, sensors. Um, so that's, that's important for that. Um, and then with, in regards to TCP dump or um, any kind of capture program you want to use, and you can use Wireshark if you have a, a X windows on your on your sensors. Um, but the main reason for that is is just to, and we'll talk about this later, but just making sure that uh, you have a means to to test uh, to make sure that packets are getting to where they're supposed to go. So if you're troubleshooting. You want to see what the point of failure is. Um, obviously, uh, these tools will, will get you there. So it's nice to have an updated, maintained version of these tools. Um, and then lastly, a uh, secure shell uh, server, uh, because, you know, it's whether, you know, if you want to maintain these um, sensors, it, it, it's obviously a, a must, um, whether you're using uh, shell scripts. Uh, you know, I use uh, Ansible. Uh, you can use, you know, Puppet Chef, you know, any, any other tools out there that uh, uh, for automating uh, maintenance. So for your updates, um, it's just, it's, it's, it's a must um, just to, to be able to, to do it more efficiently, efficiently instead of manually going into each sensor and saying, okay, we're going to do OS upgrades, you know, at, at uh, 11 p.m. Uh, Friday night and, you know, you're frantically you know, got uh, uh, 10 tabs open for all your sensors, you know. Um, so, so yeah, that's why I, I highly recommend it. So, I mean, really it depends too. I mean, you know, you can, you can not, um, you know, if, if you prefer to do one sensor at a time, that, that works too, but yeah, that, that's a mean, a means to connect to it. Um, so that's why, that's why, yeah, I definitely recommend uh, secure shell um, and same thing too if you're wanting to you know say you're saving the keycaps or the e-blogs are there you want to be able to uh, pull those off with the scp uh, just a, a quick and easy way to get uh, data off the sensors as well so uh, one of the gotchas that i've run into quite a lot is uh secure sericata uh, version dependencies. Uh, so, so I, I think there's a recent one. I don't know where it's at with Debian, but like Debian, I for a while was stuck on uh, Sericata five series, which is fine. It's you know was supported at the time. You know, still supported, I believe. But um, some of those gotchas can come. You know, depending on what kernel the distros use, um, and this can come at all different angles. It can include you know, okay, let's say there's a, a stable kernel that was released that forks a VNIC, uh, a VNIC driver that you were using that's built into the kernel. Um, so it can, it can look like uh, it can come from all angles. Um, so, but yeah, yeah, the, the big one here is, is, um, is, yeah, you just have to be cognizant of that, uh, something to, to be aware of when you, when you're picking distros is that, you know, it's, I, I don't think there's a, there's a V1 that's going to do everything uh, and it, it worked just perfectly. Um, so one of the things to consider uh, doing is running your, uh, running your sensors in a containerized environment. Uh, it's more, it is more upfront work. It's less maintenance long-term. Uh, it's easier to use your preferred distro. Um, I use Arch, by the way. <laughs> I use Arch Linux, but uh, you know, whatever your preferred distro is, you can use um, whatever you you like. Um, and there's less uh, problems with dependency uh, because you're running it in that containerized environment. Whether it's something you build or it's something that um, you use uh, another build from uh, you know uh, from somewhere else um, that works for you. So, uh, and I know some people might say, well, you know, it's, you know, you're, you're opening a black hole, <laughs> you're virtual, you're containerized. Uh, but, uh, the main thing here is, is really just, um, um, kind of making it easier and smoother to run. And, you know, I, I don't do it for everything. Um, but it is handy when I, 
you know, when I need it uh, to be more accessible and, and easier to use, so. All right, planning and scaling. So again, this is one of the most important things about kind of your virtual uh, journey here on, on uh, planning um, for the future is, um, are you gonna run an IPS or IDS mode? Uh, I, I don't run IPS mode, <laughs> but, but it is something that, um, you know, if you are considering, you need to keep that in your, in your pocket, um, in your mind, uh, you know, if, you, if you're looking to do that. Um, what kind of environments are you looking at? Are you uh, all virtual, physical, or both? Uh, this, this gets to be, you know, when you, when you start looking at uh, getting the traffic in, which we're gonna talk about soon, is uh, how, how are you doing it um, and what, what are your possibilities? So, you know, if you've got some physical boxes, you know, you, you might need to work with physical taps or uh, R-SPAN um, uh, on a physical box um, instead of just virtual switches. So, so yeah, something to, to, to keep in mind, uh, what, what kind of environment are you looking at? What do you have? Uh, in your environment. Um, you also wanna think about internal and external traffic. Uh, so a lot of this, um, at least in my opinion, it would be, um, it's a resource thing, you know, do you have the resources for, the resources for um, internal um, traffic? Um, uh, a lot of people do external first and then plan for internal later um, because, you know, obviously, the bigger threats, and not to say there's no threats in internal, but the bigger threats are going to be external. So, um, you know, if that's what you want to do first, and that's what you have the the, the resources for, um, especially in a virtual environment, also money, of course. <laughs> um, starting starting external and uh, work at maybe working internal later. Um, but yeah, you, you definitely want to think about uh, tap placements uh, and your span points. Um, hair painting is, is something you, you know, depending on what you want to do, and this is more, uh, uh, well, whether it's an ad, netted environment, um, you, you want to, um, if you're wanting to grab traffic, um, you know, say externally, maybe you want to grab traffic from in front of the firewall instead of behind, obviously that's going to dictate on, um, you know, your sensors and, and resources again, but, um, yeah, there, there's options to, um, again, you know, depending on what you're what you're working with and what you want. Um, also, uh, you know, I like to, to again keep things organized. Uh, so uh, virtual lands are are nice uh, for that. So uh, you know, so you've got end user workstations, uh, virtual workstations, and then you've got your servers and um, and having uh, VLAN information um, in the, the EVE logs is, has been uh, really nice for me because um, it just it, it keeps things nice and organized. You know, I know exactly, uh, you know, I don't need to, to think, okay, it's this sensor, but, you know, which network is it? Which sensor, which network does this sensor uh, uh, belong to. Um, so uh, that's been that's been very handy. And again, if you like organization, um, uh, when you include that in your planning, um, as far as deploying your virtual sensors, making sure um, you've kind of got you're thinking about um, uh, you know correlating uh, and segmenting your network. Um, obviously, traffic volume is important. Um, you know, I, I don't think anyone's on 10 megabits still, but maybe there is. <laughs> uh, but yeah, when you get into 100 gigabit and 10 gig and 30 gig and 40 gig, um, these are things that you you need to think about. Um, you know, and how many sensors are you looking to, to have uh, deployed virtually? Uh, do you want to do it by physical location? Uh, do you want to do it by network segment? Do you want to do it by, um, you know, say you've got some big fancy uh, uh, <laughs> firewall, uh, next gen firewall that does TLS inspection? You know, do you want to just uh, kind of piggyback on on how those are set up? 
um, you know, and that, that might just be external. So things to think about. All right, so getting traffic in. Uh, there's there's quite a number of ways to do this. Um, uh, virtual switches, uh, the Linux kernel uh, has has some options here. Um, uh, certain routers, uh, switches, physical switches as well. Um, you can do uh, R spans. You can do taps. Um, and the bottom two, they're really uh, kind of go together. So, uh, like say for example, you're doing incident response and you are on a site and you you know you have your gigabit USB three dongle. <laughs> uh, you can do uh, a USB pass through uh, in most hypervisors. Uh, that that works pretty well. Uh, or same thing, you know, with a PCI e Express card. Um, you know, you got a 10 gig card in there. Um, and essentially, I'll talk about this in, uh, coming up too, is how, you know, how this ties into the OS. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's several ways to to do it. Um, I Most of my experience has been with um, taps and spans, um, whether it's R span or ER span. Um, and that's, that's worked pretty well. Uh, so, but yeah, you have options to, uh, to look at and, and see what works best for you. And, uh, ideally in that test environment first. So, uh, testing receipts. So, you know, obviously you want to make sure again, kind of stressing that about your, your base image is, um, having TCP dump, T shark or P cap, uh, installed. Uh, as a mean to test and troubleshoot. Um, and a lot of why I put that there is because you know, <laughs> these are problems that I've had where it's like, oh man, I got to, you know, huck a binary to a VM or something. Um, it's nice to just have it, have it there um, and be able to uh, make sure that, um, you know, the, the, the span is working correctly, um, that the tap device is in fact um, functioning and working. So, uh, and then another thing too is you want to monitor for outages, um, and this is on the sensor side. Uh, so, it, whether you're working with the Siricata socket itself, um, you're a big Python person, or <laughs> or Rust, <laughs> um, uh, and you're in your you know big into CLI, uh, socket's the way to go. But uh, uh, I typically use uh, uh, a SIM um, and log management to monitor uh, the, the event logs for, uh, you know, if it's been more than a, a set amount of time, uh, then I will, I will get into that as well. Um, just, it'll send an email, it'll send a text. Um, or a signal message saying, "Hey, this is this is down. Um, I haven't received logs, uh, so that that's important um, because you know stuff stuff does go down, um, whether you know physical or virtual. Um, and they both have outages, and you know it's it's important to catch them right away. Obviously, especially in a production environment. So otherwise, you're you're kind of blind to the traffic. <laughs> so." All right, drivers and run mode, kernel drivers for device pass-through. Uh, so when we talked about device pass-through before, uh, you really want to um, use ideally the latest um, kernel drivers. So whether you're using st uh, stable kernel or long-term supported kernel, um, ideally those have are, are going to cover the major stuff uh, like Intel or Realtek or Broadcom. Um, so pass through is just, I mean, it's essentially you're, you're working with a physical sensor uh, from a driver standpoint. You want to make sure that those drivers are, are adequate too. And if you're running into problems, it's worth looking into, uh, you know, the, 
the drivers and the kernel you're running to see if um, something's going on there. So uh, I haven't had that happen too much with the uh, NIC uh, drivers in the in the Linux kernel uh, or BSD for that matter. So, um, but something to consider. So uh vnic uh vnic drivers uh for for some reason it, it's just been uh it, it, they've worked better for me um for all the hypervisors i've used um uh bird io and bmx drivers um whether they're included in the kernel or you uh add them uh, insert them as modules um they just seem to be the most stable to me, um, so that's that's why I recommend them. And obviously, you, know, you want to make sure that um, uh, those are options uh, for the kernel you're using. Uh, and I, I did want to point that out. Um, you know, most hypervisors can emulate Intel, Broadcom, Realtek, uh, Trendnet. <laughs> Any, I don't want to pick anyone here, but um, it, it does seem to be improving. It is something that I don't spend a lot of time going back on because uh, the VNIC drivers just, uh, you know, for the hypervisors just work. So I, I haven't spent, but I, I do know they have improved. Um, I have talked to some people that use uh, emulated and they, they seem to be happy with it. But, you know, if it's something you really want to do, it's it's you can definitely test it out. Uh, but yeah, it has improved. I mean, I'd say, you know, eight years ago when I was starting to do this, it just, I mean, I, <laughs> it was kind of a nightmare. Uh, it just, it was, the stability was, was very low. Um, but yeah, obviously virtual has, has been improving quite a lot. Um, for run modes, I just, uh, most of the time we're just using workers. Uh, you can use single too, like if you've got a test environment. Um, or you want to, you you don't need the resources. You want to go lower. Um, default, it's worked fine for me. Uh, that's all I've used. Um, Hyperscan has worked well in virtual environments, um, and I've been doing that for a couple of years. And uh, yeah, five and six of those versions of Sericata have just uh, most of them are prepackaged with it, and then it, it seems like um, it's if you uh, build it from source. It, <laughs> if it finds it, I think you can even build it um, as a it's a subdirectory now or something. So, uh, but it it has worked uh, pretty well in a virtual environment. So, all right, network segmentation. So yeah, like physical, important to organize sensors, physical sites, uh, VLAN subnet. Um, again, you know, depending on how. Oh, your mileage is for organization. <laughs> you know, if you got the gas for it, go. You know, um, I work mostly in uh, smaller environments, so typically it's by physical site. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can, you know, if you if you're looking at uh, an enterprise environment, um, I used to work in uh, uh, much bigger global companies and. Um, at, at which point I would definitely go the route of, of looking at um, organizing, um, you know, look at subnets and VLANs um, just to, 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 again, help organize both your, your log output's going to be easier to read, your, um, you know, your troubleshooting will be easier. So, but yeah, just keep this in the back of your mind uh, for growth and scalability. So. Your kind of rules and BPF rules included in default set. Uh, so, uh, a number of years ago, I was working with ER Span, and um, Syracotta did not have support for it, but uh, they do, they have for a while now. So, um, uh, and that is included in the default set. Um, so, it does do some uh, um, packet. Uh, analysis of ER span traffic, uh, which is basically like uh, I think it's like 50 bits uh, prefixed in each packet. Um, it's a Cisco thing. So, <laughs> um, and then you know, obviously, too, Sierra does come with some general rules, rules for inspection of traffic flow, um, and just just keeping those on. So you know, if you're if you're if ER span isn't looking right, um, there's there is an alert for that. Um, and same thing with general traffic. It's nice to have those. Um, just leave them on so you can, uh, uh, you know, keep tabs on the 
on what Siricata is seeing and if it's if it's if it's reading the packets correctly. Um, you really want to craft BPF Santex to the environment. Uh, you know, obviously, um, you know, depending on your sensor placement, your virtual sensor placement, um, you know, you know, do you do you, is this is there certain are there certain IPs that you don't want any inspection on? Um, and then obviously too, uh, depending on how complex you are with um, uh, your spans and your taps. Um, you want to avoid switch loops so you're not um, you're not monitoring the, the actual span. <laughs> um, I, I don't think I've ever done that. I don't you know I, I was thinking about this and I'm like I wonder I'm sure there's a way to do it. <laughs> not that you would want to, but um, just to make sure that you're not grabbing um, excessive uh, amounts of traffic and, and, and just common, common tooting there. So, um, it's same thing with your, your pass rules. And one thing to remember too, is pass rules, um, are not the same. BPF is kind of, uh, the top of the tree and that just catches everything going down. Uh, it, it won't, you can basically say, don't touch this or only touch this. Um, whereas pass rules, um, still get processed, uh, but they won't, uh, alert, uh, they won't apply, um, some of the pre-alert stuff, uh, to them. Um, so yeah, that, that might get into, uh, you know, if you're doing windows updates or Ubuntu updates and, you know, you don't want to alert on a known trusted server, um, you know, ties back to your own risk assessment, but, um, but yeah, that's the, the big difference there. But again, this kind of helps, um, add more efficiency, um, and, and, um, save performance a little bit. If you do both these things to, to kind of hone in on what, what, what are you after with your, uh, Siricata sensors? Yeah, and then of course, um, you know, your custom rules. Um, and uh, one of the fields that Siricata uh, can pull out is, uh, you, know, you know, VLAN tagging. Um, so, like, I like to look, write custom rules um, specific to the sensor and, you know, what's an anomaly for this specific, you know, that's specific to this VLAN. Um, <clears throat> so, and, and that's just, that's just kind of nice to do because again, you're you're kind of making your roles more efficient at this point too by, uh, you know, and saving resources by focusing on uh, certain uh, certain traffic that meets meets the criteria what criteria for what you've organized. All right, packet capture. So you got ER span, R span, port mirroring. Uh, Siricata has ER span support, um, as I mentioned. Um, HP ERM, I haven't used it. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but I just wanted to throw it in there in case anyone does use it. Um, uh, one of the tools I used before ER span was supported in Siricata is called, it's an open source tool called the RCD cap up on SourceForge there. And that works well for um, kind of chopping off those uh, 50 uh, bits um, in ER span. Um, it's, it's similar with HP ERM, um, but yeah, basically it, it just, it takes care of that and you're, uh, it'll tunnel, it'll create a tunnel interface um, in Linux that will um, basically just, it'll just be a standard uh, R span. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind if, if you need to, or if you, you know, don't want ER span in Siricata, you could use it too. Uh, totally up to you, obviously. Um, uh, packet capture that I've used, uh, AF packet and, uh, PF ring have, have worked pretty well. Um, mostly AF packet now, just because it kind of got to be a, extra work to keep PF ring, uh, you know, the kernel module stuff going and um i mean it's it's fine but uh saves time uh, yeah pack it works works fine i don't uh i'm not use, really hitting a lot of traffic per se so uh, or the environments i am in i'm not hitting a significant amount of traffic so um but yeah depending on if you've uh, worked with you know higher uh, pf ring i think would would handle handle the large flow better so
All right, typical problems, uh, non-dedicated resources. So if you've had, uh, uh, you know, you're doing shared CPU, you might uh, see some latency problems. Um, that's uh, a lot of that happens, even if it's a uh, level one hypervisor. Sharing isn't just, you know, when you're looking at speed, uh, just in sharing, <laughs> it's just, it's, it gets getting better, but I don't think it's there yet. So something to look at. Um, you've got under spec resources um, and you don't have enough RAM, uh, VRAM dedicated to uh, your, your virtual sensor. Um, and that's easy to spot, um, you know, if, if um, your, your most hypervisors have mon resource monitoring, if you're seeing that it's pegged um, to the top, you want to be, you want to be careful there. Um, and that's, you know, that's easy to do in a virtual environment. Just give it more, more RAM if you can. <laughs> uh, and same thing with CPUs too. If, if the core of the CPU is getting pegged, uh, the CPU is getting pegged heavily. Um, just, just add more cores. Um, I do want to caution too. I mean, uh, I wouldn't say blindly add these resources. You want to make sure too that, um, kind of tying back to, uh, you know, is, is there a bug somewhere, um, whether that's in the kernel, whether that's in Zeracata, um, you know, memory leaks can happen, <laughs> still happen. There's, I think it's gotten a lot better with everything in general, not just Zeracata, but, um, but yeah, just kind of making sure that that's what the problem is. And, you know, obviously if you were to double the cores and it's still chewing away CPU, well, okay, is there, yeah, is there a bug? Is there a rule that, uh, or a custom rule or even a, a, a something in a role set that might be uh, uh, just going, uh, going crazy on your uh, resources? Uh, so yeah, OS Phoenix drivers, uh, are they old or, or, you know, are you, did you, um, leave emulated, uh, drivers going still, um, I, that, that's a big one for me too, because I've done that, um, in some of the setups where I've, uh, it's, it's like, oh, this isn't, uh, doesn't seem like it's getting all the traffic and then you look into it and it's like, oh, it was, yeah, it was years ago, but seeing that, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's emulating Intel and Intel neck. <laughs> so, which, um, yeah, again, less of a problem now, but, um, but yeah, it, it is something to consider, you know, um, or same thing too, if you're using an older kernel, maybe there's, um, the VNIC drivers, there's a bug or, you know, it's just, it's just old and hasn't been updated, um, to support newer features. Could be that too. So, uh, the other big one is improper uh, MTU, or you know, you get into jumbo frames. Um, and a big problem with this is you can miss out on a lot of traffic, um, and it's completely seems random. So, <laughs> so yeah, you know, when you're um, um, looking at uh, your logs and, and just something doesn't add up, or you know, you've sent some, you've done some test traffic and you're not seeing it. Or it's sporadic. Um, you want to make sure that the the NIC on the OS is properly set to you know is, is the R span you know is it using jumbo frames? Um, you want to make sure that you you uh, match that OS side. So uh, hypervisor same thing too. Uh, you know proper CPU extensions are are exposed. Um, uh, you know, doesn't support, uh, doesn't have VNIC support um, on there. Um, sometimes, you know, it, it might be if you're forced to emulate a NIC, well, <laughs> it's, not, it's not really uh, an option, but then you're going to have to play around with emulated uh, VNICs. Um, and then, yeah, the last one too has kind of got me. Um, there's been um, bugs in the network stack of, of uh, one of the hypervisors that I worked with, and um, that was a lot, a lot of hours spent trying to figure that one out, <laughs> um, and then getting the report to the the, the vendor. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's you know it's it's one of those things you have to kind of exhaust uh, all testing to figure out sometimes what the problem is. Um, <clears throat>
All right, just kind of a quick overview of production here. I know I'm going over quite a bit on my time here. Uh, <laughs> tested base sensor image deployed across multiple sites. So this is kind of my ideal environment here. You've got our span of VLAN tagging for internal traffic, uh, external sensors downstream from firewall, sensors updated and managed by scripts, Ansible, alerting and monitoring with the SIM. Um, and this is kind of, you know, you get the insight you need. Um, again, our span um, has worked well, well for me in a virtual environment. Um, and this is just kind of my overview of the ideal <laughs> production environment. Um, I was going to do do a video on this, but I, I did not have time just to kind of walk through it. But um, yeah, it's, it's just something to to think about um, when you're deploying. You know, what is your what is your end goal? Um, you know, when you, it, when you do go to production, what is it going to look like? Um, All right, and this is just a quick uh, credit for digital artwork. So obviously, I, I use a lot of free uh, stuff from Flickr. <laughs> uh, with with Littles, I, I used to be into photography, but uh, <laughs> even if I didn't have Littles, it's finding the time to to get all these cool uh, meerkat pictures. <laughs> <laughs> so credit credit there for the licensing. Um, so now we're going to go into uh, discussion and Q&A. I know that was a lot of information to, to go through um, and, uh, in, a, in a shorter amount of time, um, but hopefully it gives you an idea for, uh, you know, your next steps in uh, setting up virtual sensors. Uh, thank you for attending and, and also for coming to my talk. And I, I do throw up uh, some ways to get in touch with me uh, on Twitter, uh, Syracata Forums, and then I'll be on the Discord uh, uh, server for the conference as well. So uh, thank you everyone for your time and uh, have a great rest of your day and uh, conference.